the first time that I have talked to a chicken on Zoom. That is the first thing that everybody says when they meet me. <laughs> I'm sure lots of our friends are wondering, what is an atmospheric scientist? An atmospheric scientist is someone who studies the atmosphere. So we study everything from the ground up to the top. Wow. What exactly is happening with the climate on our planet? It feels sometimes like someone's playing with the thermostat. It'll be really cold one day and then, oh, super hot the next day. Well, I know people often call it global warming, but you know what I call it? Global weirding. Oh, things are just getting weirder. We see crazy dry and then wet, crazy hot and then cold. We see wildfires and storms. Wherever we live, the weather is getting weirder. And we scientists know why. Huh? Mm -hmm. It's us. <gasps> uh oh. How can the things that I do at home help everyone on the planet? Well, we often think, you know, I'm just one person, so what difference do my actions make? But what we don't realize is what we do is contagious. So when we reduce our food waste, or when we stop using plastics, when we walk or bike to school instead of driving, we can all do these things together. And here's the secret. When we do them and when we talk about them with other people, that's how we catalyze change. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. Some of the most positive things that I get most excited about are what kids are doing, whether it's kids who are winning science fairs, there's kids who are helping their schools cut their heat trapping gas emissions, there's kids who are working with their neighborhoods or the organizations they're part of. Kids are everywhere making a huge difference. No way. Oh, wow, well, that gives me so much hope. And so is life on Earth all connected? We are all connected to each other. And in fact, if you think about it, where does where does our oxygen come from? Where does our water come from? Where does our food come from? All of that comes from things that we make here on planet Earth. So we all depend on each other. I love my coop that I live in. It's my home sweet home. But if I'm connected to the planet, then is that my home too? That's exactly the way I think about it. I live in a house with other people. In the same way we share this home, I share it with eight billion other humans. You share it with all of us humans and a lot of other chickens. And we all share it with all of the plants and animals and all of the other living things. Wow. So if I care about you and I care about the people I live with, I should also care about our home, the planet. Oh yeah, you never know what's gonna happen, but what you can do is you can just do your best. And if all of us are doing our best, I'm absolutely convinced we can change the world. our planet protector friends might not know that you are a super popular influencer. Can you tell us what that is exactly? Yeah, so I make videos on YouTube. Now before we get going, make sure to like this video, subscribe, and turn on those post notifications. Specifically videos for eight to 10 year olds. I love to go into the gaming world and create these stories. As an influencer, it's crazy because what you do online can really influence what the kids like to do. I'll say, I've been influenced already. Check out my McKenzie inspired outfit. Affirmative, we have never looked better. <laughs> If you had to create a digital world around me, what would it be like? And how could we use the game to get players outside in nature, which is my favorite place? I thought it would be so fun if it's this kind of very futuristic farm. So I'm talking like robotic scarecrows or even like hovering tractors. And I thought it would be super cool if we had future chicken in the game and she gave the players little tasks to do even in real life. Maybe some of the tasks could be like, take a picture of a specific plant or a leaf or planting a seed. You could do this in your backyard. You could do this at a local park and bring it back, show your picture in an in-game portal. And once Future Chicken sees that you completed the task, then Future Chicken can lay her eggs, give them to you. And now you have these eggs that can hatch and feed little chickens on your farm. I love it. Oh yeah. <laughs> 
A lot of us love screen time. Affirmative. Yes, we do. Woohoo! But do you think it's important to balance digital time with time spent outdoors? Or like I like to call it, green time? I definitely think it is very important. It's hard for me not to be connected to nature because I feel like it's all around me where I live. So the first thing I like to do is go out for a walk, get some fresh air, get some sunlight on you. Sun is very important. Uh, a lot of the planet protectors that are listening or watching today are kids. Could you share some simple steps that kids could take to help the environment? And I think it is very important to do the small things that kind of build up to being a big change. So for example, when you're brushing your teeth, in between the brushes, you can turn off that water. I do it, I do it myself. So I think you guys should do it as well. When you pack your lunch in the morning, I think it's really important to make sure you're using reusable containers, putting your trash in the right areas where it should go. You need to reduce, reduce, recycle. You need to go out there and you need to make the change happen, right? Yeah. Mackenzie, are you hopeful about the future of our planet? I definitely am hopeful about the future of our planet because I feel like kids now, they are so smart with like technology and stuff. A, I think these kids are so creative. I feel like it's so much easier to spread these ideas through the world right now through social media, right? Especially with all these influencers as well. Yes, I think social media has such great power to influence people for positive change. Definitely, I feel like our planet is in good hands. Hi, Potato. Hi, Frittata. Hi. Hey, Penny. Welcome to the year 2050, and thanks for being on the Future Chicken Today Show. You're not only an Olympic champion and awesome athlete, you're also a protector of the planet. Can you tell us about what motivated you to help create a healthier future for the Earth? For me, I think it was just because I grew up in the beaches, and so we were always by water and everything, and it was just really important for us to be aware of our surroundings and what we could do to protect the planet and make a better future for ourselves. I love nature. I love the fresh air and the trees, and especially the bugs. <laughs> <laughs> I heard you grow a vegetable garden. Oh. How does that make you feel? I, I just love the idea of kind of growing your own fruits and vegetables. I think it's so cool to be able to make the food that you're putting in your body. Incredible! How do you think positive thinking can help kids continue to be protectors of the planet? Positive thinking is going to get us such a long way. I think kids are always the biggest change makers in the world because they have so much imagination, so much inspiration, and having that positive outlook, you're going to want to go and make that positive change, and you're going to encourage other people to help you as well. Oh boy. What do you think some small steps are that kids could take to help protect the planet? When I was younger, we used to go to the beach and we used to pick up garbage and we would go around the community and we would put little fish signs over the grates just to remind people that when you are doing things like washing your car or put things into the grate to be conscious of what you're using. Thank you very much. Things like that are small, but also make a huge difference. And it's also just fun to hang out with your friends and do something that makes you all feel good. I couldn't agree more. That's amazing. Penny, could you do something special for us and put on all your Olympic medals? Ah, wow, that's a lot of medals. How many of them are there again? I have seven. <gasps> That is amazing. They must be really heavy. They are pretty heavy. Whoa. You must have a very strong neck. I've definitely had to work out a little bit. Oh yeah. Do you think you could show us one close up? This one's from Rio in 2016. No way. This was a gold one. I won this one in the 100 freestyle. What does freestyle mean? Well, technically freestyle, you can do any stroke you want. However, most people do front crawl. Is that is that like this? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, you're bang on. They're very noisy. I know. <laughs> like me. <laughs> I am. Great to see you. Hi, Potato. Hi, Potato. Thank you so much for having me. You are a singer and songwriter. When did you write your first song and what was it about? I wrote my first song when I was seven and it was called America Home because apparently I was a very patriotic seven-year-old. What are your songs about now? My songs are often things I would basically write in my diary. I just always write about what I'm going through, mental health, kind of just navigating growing up. 
Wow. And you just write about the way you feel emotionally. How does that help you? Honestly, it's always helped me process my emotions. And like I consider the piano my friend. And whenever I write songs, it just feels like I'm kind of hanging out with a friend. That's amazing. Let's talk about community. Why is community so important to you? Community is important to me because it makes me feel at home. You know, I've been very fortunate from the music I've written to kind of garner this community of people who relate to my songs. And, and I think that's just the coolest thing. Incredible. Does having this community make you feel stronger? Like you're part of a bigger movement? Yes, it definitely makes me feel stronger. And it also makes me feel like there's a deeper power to music than we think. I tend to write songs about sadness and anxiety. And I've had people say, I thought I was alone, but then I heard your song. And that makes me feel like I actually made some sort of difference. Totally. Communities can be super supportive. What do you do for your mental health? I do a whole lot of things for my mental health. It can be as simple as drinking water or just taking a walk and not being on my phone for a little bit. But it's just about the little actions that you take for yourself to make yourself feel better. Do you think maintaining a balance between your music and other activities is important? Absolutely. I think in life in general, it's just important to have multiple eggs in your basket. <laughs> I think just having different things to focus on makes your life more fulfilling. Oh yeah! And do you have any advice for kids out there who are trying to find balance in their lives? I think just make sure you're taking care of you. Like, yes, do your work, but also make sure you have an activity that you look forward to after and it is truly just all about balance. For sure, by keeping our life in balance, we take better care of our mental, physical, and emotional health. Yeah. Well, that was awesome. Thank you for visiting us today. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much for having me. Hi, Potato. Hi, Frittata. Hi. Hi, Autumn. I'm excited you're here. Tell us, where did you grow up? I grew up in Wakamakong, which is located on Manitoulin Island in Ontario, Canada. And how old were you when you realized that water in a neighboring community was undrinkable? I was eight years old, and at the time I was attending a water ceremony in this community. And I ended up having to use the washroom, and of course, you wash your hands after using the washroom. But in this community, I couldn't. Wow, that's so hard to imagine. What did you do? So at the time, my thinking was, well, there's kids that are my age and much younger who have no idea what it's like to drink water from their tap. They've never experienced that. And for me, that didn't sit right. And it made me want to speak up and use my voice because this community had no justice. How did you find the courage to speak up? My school had a native language speaking contest and we had to write speeches about what we we're most passionate about and specific topics regarding the environment. And I chose mine to be written about the water and the environment and the importance of it. That is super inspiring. I mean, you were just a kid, eight years old, just like many of the kids tuning in today. Yeah, well, in our culture, we believe that water is alive and that it has a spirit and that it can hear us and it can feel us. And, you know, obviously we can hear it and we can feel it. And without water, there would not necessarily be any life because everything needs water to live. The plants, animals, humans, even when we're babies and we live in our mother's womb, we need water to survive and we need water to be created. And was there someone who inspired you to become an advocate? Well, my auntie Josephine, she was an advocate like me and she's the one who inspired me to, you know, use my voice and speak up for the water and she helped me learn about the importance of water and what it meant as indigenous people we're automatically given that like right and responsibility to like be caretakers of the land and be caretakers of the water and our people and so we automatically have that respect for it and that courage to want to speak up and be advocates Autumn, are you hopeful that one day water will be protected everywhere? I am hopeful and the current generations are what give me the most hope because there's so many young people speaking up and using their voices. How can one person, one child, or one chicken make a positive difference when it comes to protecting our planet? You can use your voice, stand up, be confident, and help educate other people about what you're passionate about. Ah, I will definitely do that. How are you doing today? I'm great. How are you, Potato? I'm so happy to be here with you today. And it's great having you with us. You're from 365 Give. Could you tell us what that is? 365 Give is actually a charitable organization that I started with my son when he was just three years old. And today, it's rippled to create this global giving movement that's changing the world. Wow! 
That's amazing. And I heard it's expanding quickly. Why do you think that is? Oh, that's easy. When one person gives, it inspires more and more and more people to give with every small act of giving. So when we're good to our planet, we're good to the environment, we're good to the people around us, that just spreads everywhere. I love everything you just said. And I want to know how and why you started this with your son. Well, I decided if I wanted to grow a happy, kind, compassionate, loving little human being, I was going to have to teach him how to do that every single day. So literally on his third birthday, we decided that we were going to do one thing to give back to the world, to people, the planet, or animals every day for 365 days. And it was a remarkable experience because we would go looking for ways to give and it became our adventure for a whole year. Incredible. Oh, wonderful. And what's the first thing your son gave back? Well, you know, you're going to like this one because my son's favorite way to give is he likes to give back to animals. <laughs> so we went down to our local animal shelter and we donated towels and blankets. Aww. It was our way of reusing as well to help take care of the environment. Oh, wonderful. And what would you like kids to know about the joy of giving. When we give, you get something called your daily dose of happiness. Whoa! What? And this is actually the science part and how it affects our bodies. It makes us happier, it makes us healthier, it makes our brains work better, and it makes life become easier for us. <laughs> giving literally makes you feel happier. Oh yeah! <laughs> I heard it's important to practice giving. Why is that? Well, you know, we need to think about practicing giving a bit like brushing your teeth. We wouldn't remember to brush our teeth and we wouldn't get really good at brushing our teeth if we didn't practice every day. And giving is the exact same thing. When we practice every day, it becomes automatic. That is so true. It just takes a little practice and then you get really good at it. We get better and better and better and then that impact grows too, right? Every day when we start to give, we make a positive impact on the world around us, and that makes a big difference. Oh, yeah! I love it! Thank you so much for sharing those insights with us and all those wonderful tips. Oh, you're so welcome. Bye, potato. Bye, frittata. Yeah.